So it's time that I made some frames for these large pieces of glass that I have here. If you're not up to speed, these are actually glass inserts that come out of Pella double insulated sliding glass doors. Really nice pieces of glass. I've already pulled the sliding glass door frames off the insert here, and I'm going to take what I have, I've got two of these, and make them into windows for the large opening in the wall that I have here that I've got to frame up. Now, I've been debating whether I should go with stationary frames, just like a picture window in a house that doesn't open, or if I should go with hinged frames so I could open these up and let some fresh air in. And I've just been going back and forth, and what I've decided to do, after reading through the comments in my last video as well, is I've decided to make the frames for these stationary. It simplifies the build, it eliminates a lot of the potential you know, leakage issues that you could have, or breakage uh, issues with the frames torquing from opening them. So it's just a lot more complicated to build frames that open with very little benefit. The only benefit really is that you get a breeze through. So the main benefit to a window obviously is light and a view. So that's what I've decided to do. So let's go get some lumber, see if we can make some simple wood frames for these so I can move forward on this wall. So the first thing that I've decided to do is see what I'm working with. Maybe the original frames that are under this vinyl coating will be usable. I didn't know, so I just figured I'd peel these things and you know, see if it maybe saved me some labor in the long run. So the vinyl on these frames had just lost its flexibility and become brittle. You can see, just breaks instead of bends. And also, you know, the silicone that had sealed this to the frame, it's broken down over the years as well. You shouldn't be able to peel this stuff off easily and just break it into pieces. It just all become fragile. So, you know, these frames, at least as they are existing, uh, were no longer good. So these little guys or what I refer to as piss ants. I'm not for sure why they're called that. Probably because they will bite the piss out of you. Or fire, ants. or fire ants. I'm not for sure. They're a real small ant, but man, they, they got a pretty good little bite to them. Let me get you a little sh closer shot of them. They tend to, they seem to like this uh, piece of wood. Okay, raise it up. You just set your breath on. Wait a second. Just hold on to it. Alright, so we're going to go this way. Okay. Yeah, it's, they're heavier than, well, they're heavier than you think. So the glass in these definitely was not designed to be replaced. At least it doesn't seem like it was. This one's in here really good. The silicone on this one's not broken down near as bad as it was on the other one. The other one you could just crumble uh, the silicone between your fingers, but this one, not the case. So it's giving me a little more trouble on the disassembly. I just don't want to break it, you know. side. A few things. Clean glass, clean stuff off of glass better than a razor blade like paint or you know silicone, whatever. As long as it's a new one, it's not all, the edge is not all beat up with, it won't hurt a thing. So the old frames off this glass are actually in really good shape. Check that out. They should be. They've been held under, under a vinyl covering. But I originally thought that these were redwood, but 
I believe they're cedar. I don't know. I'm not a great judge of uh, wood types. But I think I can make these work. And I think they'll actually work pretty good, to be honest. They're almost like they were made for this piece of glass. I was going to build some, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. You know, I can work with these a little bit and, uh, and make that work. Right? Let's see why not. Check out that guy. He's about, I don't know, two inches across or more, two and a half inches. Pretty decent size spider. They get quite a bit bigger than that though. That's a wolf spider. They, I've seen them, I don't know, about twice that size, but almost. So there's one frame roughed out, good and square square as it'll be anyway. Uh, let me show you the stuff that I'm going to use to coat this with. Now this is just the beginning of the frame, right? It's just the rough, the backbone, I guess. Now this glass will get set in this frame, it'll get siliconed in, then it'll get locked in the frame with another trim piece. and get spaced to where it's set center of the frame and then doesn't actually contact the frame. It'll be kind of silicone spaced in. That's the idea. I'm going to try to mimic what uh, the original uh, doors were like and how that they were uh, attached to the frames. That's the idea anyway. With some rubber spacers and you know, you get the idea. You'll see. So this is the product that I'm going to use to coat these frames with to protect them from rain and stuff, keep them from rottening. It's Helmsman, made by Minwax, made for indoor-outdoor furniture, windows, stuff like that. Should be pretty good stuff, I think. So let's get this frame outside give it a coat and then I'm going to build that other frame while it's drying. So this is your thing. I'm just going to coat this heavy except for the inside where I want my silicone to adhere to. Then later I'll give it a light sanding and then one more coat, maybe two more coats. Just depends, right? I'm not going for a you know, a super finish here. I just want the protection that this is going to give. So my thoughts are that this wood finish will just soak in, give this stuff a little better ability to withstand the weather. 
I'll give it a few coats. We'll install, you know, finish and install these windows, and then uh, once they're installed, paint them. I don't care what this wood looks like, and I don't care what this finish makes them look like. My plan is that this stuff will just hopefully protect this. I've got, I mean, I barely used any of this, and I've got some furniture that I actually wanted to use this on as well. Some outdoor stuff that I would like to to properly sand and finish. So hopefully this will help. So this old chimney's in very bad condition. I'll actually grab the camera, get you up close, and show you just how bad it is. But it's got to come down. There's no repair in this thing. It's past that point years ago. We also got to trim these bushes, or actually... Actually, those are trees away from the roof because they're going to drop leaves on the roofs and fill my new gutters once I get everything replaced. So they got to be trimmed back. But I do have to leave one, one limb so Peanut the Squirrel can get up there. But anyway, let's get up there. I'll show you just how bad this thing is and we'll start tearing it out. This old roofs and roof shit. This old roofs and roof shape, isn't it? This old roof is in rough shape. I went through on this side, put oversized screws in all the holes. It did have skylights in it at one time, and whoever owned this property before me, uh, what? The, oh man, get off me, bug! Whoever <laughs> before me, whoever owned it, covered them up with a piece of tin. There was three on this side, three on the other. They both. They all six leak. Let's get up here and have a look. Now, this is not a very uh, steep pitched roof, so it's pretty easy to work on. But you can see all the limbs overhanging here. It's a big, big no-no. And those have to all be trimmed back. Let me grab the loppers, and we'll start with that, so we can, you know, work around this chimney without having tree limbs in our face. So when I put the oversized screws in this roof, it definitely helped, but it didn't stop the leaks. I even went as far as to put a sealer over top of the rows of screws, and that helped as well. But, you know, a few hundred uh, cycles of you know, heating up and cooling down, and then that sealer gets hard and starts cracking, and you're just right back where you started, if not worse. listening for the hum of wasps. I'm fully expecting there to be a wasp nest in this thing about the size of a grapefruit. And as soon as I start taking this thing off, they're just going to go attack me. Uh, that just... So I got to looking at this thing, kind of messing with it a bit, trying to figure out what's the best way to get this down. And I really didn't want to work on a ladder with an air hammer taking this thing down one block at a time. So I grabbed my pry bar and wedged on it a bit. And this thing's just barely standing there. It's scary loose. So I hooked, come along in a chain to this tree, and I'm going to pull it down. It does have a pipe that runs through the wall. I think it's ceramic, porcelain, whatever. And uh, it should come out. Well, it will, one way or another. But let's pull it down, get this thing on the ground. Uh, 
Oh, it's coming loose about halfway down, which is fine. Hmm, man. That would, uh, that would hurt if that hit you. So there's a look at the upper section. It was in bad shape, really bad shape, actually. I mean, the chimney itself was probably still fine, the liner, the actual business part of it. But you know, who wants to fire up a chimney that looks like that? See, there's the liner. From you know, just what I can see of it, it looks all right. And these are special blocks, blue blocks. They're just you know, cast in a square shape, and then you put your liner in there. Chimney blocks, I guess. There it is. Now i got to get the rest of it down, and I'll show you the damage that the actual shop has up there. It's pretty bad, really. Never bought any of that, but I assume you buy that in sections. It looks like a three-foot section. Look what we have here, the signature mark of a true mason. Miller High Life. Budweiser there. Must have been a team of masons. Huh. Another one. And another one. And another one. Oh. Huh. Huh. Number six. There's a six pack so far. Scared me. Big wasp nest. It's an old one though. So look at that. It's not actually as far in there as I thought. So uh, definitely this truss is going to have to be repaired on this end. And um, you know the roof's going to get sheeting and stuff. And I'll have to inspect that seal plate pretty good. But I can't get in there to do that right this minute. But, I don't know, we'll see.
definitely some work to do here. So because this building had settled and you know pulled on everything, uh, all the nails almost on the upper side were loose, and these are the screws that I replaced all those nails with. You can see they're just quite a large shank, a rubber washer, and then a uh, yeah, rubber washer, and then a uh, steel washer. So you just pull the screw nail out and screw this in its place. They helped, but uh, you know they weren't the answer to making my roof stop leaking. Show us your shirt. <laughs> Just bump a squirrel. <laughs> well, I pulled out the old table saw. This saw was given to me by a buddy that was moving out of state and didn't want to take it with him. And up until I got this, I'd, I'd never owned a table saw. But I like these old Craftsman cast iron tops. My dad's got two like this. Anyway, started using this thing just uh, for the uh, inside of these frames and the pulley came off uh, the belt obviously came off as well and then I noticed that uh, somebody had been running this thing he had been running this thing without a key in it and had just run the grub screw down into the into the keyway on the shaft here I'll get you a better shot of it but it can't work like that at least not for long so I gotta file this keyway out just dress this thing up at least good enough to use for now until I can that pulley's even bent until I can get, you know, the proper, proper pulley and get this thing fixed correctly. So there's quite a bit of damage in that keyway. That grub screw had been tightened down multiple times in there, caused a lot of damage, and it had been run loose a lot. And wore this engine shaft almost probably a quarter of the way in two back here. That's unfortunate because this motor probably lasts forever. It's a Craftsman motor, so it's probably the original one that came with this saw, if I was betting. But, you know, we'll order a new pulley. I'm going to cast iron one if I can. Uh, you can see this thing's been beat on a million times as well. So there's been ongoing frustration that somebody has had with this thing. You know, it just never worked. But hopefully this will get us back on in business. It's one of those jobs you run into that make... The job you were going to do take five times longer. I think that'll work, but it ain't going to work too long. It's crazy, crooked. All right, whatever. Shouldn't come off now, though. At least not immediately. So all I'm doing here, cutting this wood down to size, it's actually some hardwood flooring and I'm cutting the tongue and the groove off each side, which leaves me with a board that's about know, three and a half to four inches wide. Great general use stuff, especially for trim. I'll show you in more detail in just a second.
So this is my DWS 735 DeWalt wood planer that I've owned for, I don't know, probably five years or so. I bought it specifically for this hardwood flooring and uh, planed all the wood that went into the hardwood flooring in the house. And I have to say, it's a, it's a great unit. I don't like the blade system on it that much, the original one, but everything else about it's pretty well built. And I think it's a great general, you know, wood shop, home shop, uh, wood planer, in my opinion. It's deafening loud, though. It will destroy your eardrum, so hearing protection is not an option with this thing. So the wood that I'm planting down here is longleaf yellow pine. It used to grow all up and down the east coast, I believe from Maryland, down into the Florida, and all the way out into Texas actually. Pretty much logged to where it was endangered, and you just don't see it much anymore unless it's in reclaimed stuff. But it's just an evergreen it's a pine tree, but uh, grow really straight and really large, so they were you know, sought after for lumber. But uh, what I've got here is what I would consider heartwood. I've got a whole bunch of uh, resin-soaked pieces. You see, it's just like glass, hard, and so much heavier than you'd think a piece of wood this size would be. Um, you know, pretty resistant to rot. Uh, this old house did have some termite damage in it that this come out of. But you can see the termites just completely stop right where the wood transitions from its red uh, to the white or yellow. They just don't like that resin or how hard it is. But it's good stuff. You know, I've got a bunch of it, and I'm going to use it to frame around the inside of my windows. So going down, or going from about an inch thick down to about five-eighths is what I'm doing. Look at all the growth rings in this piece. So Walnut the Squirrel is not as little as he once was, and he's going deeper and deeper into the woods every day. And we're seeing less and less of him. In fact, this is the last time that I've filmed him, or even seen him, in the last five days. So he's just growing up, you know, being far more independent. And I'm hoping that this little guy will follow in Peanut's footsteps and you know, pay us a visit ever so often. You know, him being a male, I, I just don't know how he's going to act, so hopefully we see more of Peanut. Or Peanut, we see Peanut all the time. Peanut comes every other day. Hopefully we see more of Walnut. Uh, this little guy's sweet. And uh, it's been a pleasure to, uh, you know, to get to know him and, you know, share some, share some food with him. <laughs> he's definitely made me laugh a million times. He's crazy. Hopefully we'll see more of him. So in the old house that this came out of, there was no subfloor. This was nailed directly to the floor joist. You know, modern homes nailed to the floor joist will be sheeting and then your flooring goes on top of that. Well, that wasn't the case out of this thing. It was also 
Um, at one time, they probably nailed down a whole bunch of big throw rugs in all the different rooms, tacked them down, and they never got all the tacks out. Or they just drove them flush so you didn't catch your foot on it. But uh, when I'd done a whole bunch of this stuff, I had to run a metal detector over it so I didn't chew up my planer blades any faster you know, than I already do. But I hit this nail. But those blades are already dull anyway, so it doesn't matter. But you get the idea. Lots of nails in this stuff. So I'm going to flip over the blades on this. I wish this model come with blades that were you know, large enough to where you could sharpen them on the surface grinder, but they're really not. They're made to be bought. Um, which is okay, I guess. But you know, if you're doing any dirty or rough wood, they don't stay sharp very long. Um, and each set of blades for this come with... Uh, they're two-sided, so they can be flipped over which is nice, so you really get two sets of blades for one. Make sure you unplug a wood planer before you start messing with the blades. Just turn your hand into the sausage. Um, let me show you the blades down here. We'll flip them over, and then I'll run everything through one more time to get everything to good size, or to the size that I want, and um, everything with a good finish. So there's a look at the cutter head on this thing. There's three three blades. You can get an actual whole new head for this that has carbide inserts, which would be really nice, but they're pretty expensive as well. Carbide bl blades would just last so much longer, I'm sure, and handle the occasional nail strike so much better. But, you know, I don't know. I've never used one, and I've never talked to anybody who has, so I can't say that a carbide blade set would give you a better finish because usually carbide is not as sharp as high speed steel, at least from my experience. This holder, and there's the blade. So there's just not a lot of blade there. So instead of sharpening it, I mean, if you sharpen it, you just run it back, and there's just for so little exposed on the cutting head, that really it's not much of an option. But you just flip it over. And reinstall it. And you get a sharp blade on there. That's it. So Peanut just come in for a snack. She usually comes in about the same time every night, right around dusk. She was she was eating, got choked on a peanut. I thought I was going to have to do the Heimlich on her. <laughs> she seems all right. Uh, she's got a nest in the woods now. She's been coming in, getting her belly full, grabbing a couple for the road, and then heading back into the woods. She looks like she's doing well. She's about a year old now. There's a bird over there making that popping noise. It's been doing that for probably an hour. It's about to drive me insane. So the glass is set down in the frames, in this frame now. It's spaced off of the edge. So ideally this glass will be touching nothing really other than silicone so it can float in there. Because imagine if this wall settled, the frame's going to be rigidly mounted in the wall. Uh, so this is just going to have a few points. It'll have a few, couple big pads at the bottom of silicone. So this this glass will basically rest on silicone and nothing else. The wood's just there to give me something to mount into the wall.
and none of this is going to be seen. Still going to plug this hole. This will all be capped. Be the inside. So these, I guess it's a Japanese pool saw is what it's called. I picked this up several months ago. I think it was less than $10. Extremely thin and just crazy sharp. You wouldn't believe how good these are until you actually try one. So pick one up. Got a few extra dollars. Got a use for one. Definitely nice. All right, guys, fast forward a bit. Got the trim on these, and it looks pretty good. Cody urethane, just held it, the trim on with wood screws, and then a bead of silicone around the inside just to seal it from any moisture that may get on here. This is the inside. I've got to do a very similar thing to the to the outside, which needs to be done to both. So about three-quarters of the way done. Really, probably another good day, which I could easily spend a month on these things trying to make them elaborate just not necessary. I don't have the schedule for it and this shop's not going to be in Better Homes and Gardens magazine anyway so it doesn't really make any difference. Plus I think they look plenty good uh, as is. And if I can get these in the wall without breaking them it'll be amazing because as you can imagine they're awkward and very heavy. Probably 150 pounds I'm guessing a piece. So we'll see. Chimney's down. Assess the damage which wasn't as bad as I thought. I assumed it was going to be eaten to pieces in that corner but it's not too bad, you know. Definitely repairable, which we'll have to do coming up soon. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who supported me on this project. Much appreciated. Hopefully, we see little Walnut again. His mother's worried. He's a teenage boy squirrel, so doing probably what you expect. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.